come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Welcome everybody to our celebration today of the great feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ, or Corpus Christi as it was known. Christ came into our midst, he gave his life for us on the cross as well as in every Mass. And he still gives himself to us today in the Eucharist to show his great love for us. How do we respond? The times we fail to respond, we ask God's forgiveness. Heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. To give glory to God, he said. Glory to God in the highest, and on, on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. Good we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. We live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the book of Exodus. Moses went and told the people all the commands of the Lord and all the ordinances. In answer, all the people said with one voice, we will observe all the commands that the Lord has decreed. Moses put all the commands of the Lord into writing and early next morning he built an altar at the foot of the mountain with 12 standing stones for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then he directed certain young Israelites to offer holocausts and to immolate bullocks to the Lord as communion sacrifices. Half of the blood Moses took up and put into basins, the other half he cast on the altar. And taking the Book of the Covenant, he read it to the listening people and they said, we'll, we will observe all that the Lord has decreed. We will obey. Then Moses took the blood and cast it towards the people. This, he said, is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you, containing all these rules. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Responsorial Psalm. The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. O oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. The cup of the, uh, the cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make, I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. The second reading is from the letter to the Hebrews. Now Christ has come as the high priest of all the blessings which were to come. He has passed through the greater, the more perfect tent, which is better than one made by men's hands, because it is not of this created order. And he has entered the sanctuary once and for all, 
taking with him not the blood of goats and bull calves, but his own blood, having won an eternal redemption for us. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer are sprinkled on those who have incurred defilement, and they restore the holiness of their outward lives. How much more effectively the blood of Christ, who offered himself as the perfect sacrifice to God through the eternal spirit, can purify our inner self from dead actions so that we do our service to the living God. He brings a new covenant as the mediator, only so the people who were called to an eternal inheritance may actually receive what was promised. His death took place to cancel the sins that infringed the earlier covenant. The word of the Lord. Sequence. Behold the bread of angels sent for pilgrims in their banishment. The bread for God's true children meant that may not unto dogs be given. Oft in the olden types for showed in Isaac on the altar bowed and in the ancient paschal food and in the manna sent from heaven. Come then, good shepherd, bread divine, still show to us thy mercy sign. O feed us still, still keep us thine, so we may see thy glory shine in fields of immortality. O thou, the wisest, mightiest, best, our present food, our future rest, come make us each thy chosen guest, co-heirs of thine and comrades blessed with saints whose dwelling is with thee. Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him, and say to the owner of the house which he enters, The master says, Where is my dining room in which I can eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room furnished with couches, all prepared. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and prepared the Passover. And as they were eating, he took some bread and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them. Take it, he said, this is my body. Then he took a cup and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them and all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. After psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First question then, do you remember your first Holy Communion day? I know it's difficult for a lot of us to remember because it's many, many years ago, but there'll be some memories that remind us of how special that day was. And one of those, even though it may be a shallow reason, is that we got dressed up and we had a party 
and the day was made to be special. It's one of the reasons why we, we do those things and why we shouldn't begrudge uh, the children who keep making their First Communion each year those things because they make sure that we know how special First Communion Day is. Because if you think about it, it should be one of the, if not the most important days of our life. Because we just have to stop and think about what it is we're celebrating that day. And this is what we're celebrating on this feast, the Feast of Corpus Christi. Because it's, it's once again, as Father John said at the beginning of Mass, it's Jesus giving himself to us over and over again. So that means that We've got our first Holy Communion Day, but every single time we receive communion, it should be the same celebration. Can you imagine if we had that celebration every time we receive communion? But it's, it's Jesus keeps giving himself. Because, you know, we believe as Christians that God, uh, and in the second person of the Trinity, God became man. He emptied himself and he entered the messiness of our lives. And he bound himself in human form. He, he risked everything. Think about how fragile and vulnerable God became to come and be one of us, to complete his mission and then raise us up with him and save us so that we could be in heaven with him. He you know, is a little baby in the womb. He was raised by human parents and so on and so forth. He, he was so vulnerable on the cross. He gave himself on the cross to us and then he rose from the dead. But it doesn't, didn't just stop there because that theme continued because he realized that he needed to give us a gift because we, as human beings, need real, tangible, you know, things we can touch and see and taste and smell that our senses can feel. We need those things to keep us going. So that's why he's given himself in this wonderful gift of the Eucharist. Eucharist meaning to give thanks. That's what we do at every Mass, every time we receive the Eucharist. He's given himself in that gift. Once again, he's risked everything because, you know, just, just think about it. It's so overwhelming that every single Mass, Jesus is there, really, truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity. But in these fragile things. Every time Father John and I hold that host in our hands, it just reminds me anyway of, of how fragile, the fact that I can just break it, break that piece of bread which has become the body of Christ. It's, you know, God could have chosen any other way of coming uh, to make himself more precious and less fragile and less at risk and less vulnerable to, um, you know, to that breakage, that, that, that fragility and that weakness. But he's once again told us where true power is, what it really means to be God and what it really means to love because once again he risks everything and shows us how much he loves us every time we encounter him in that blessed sacrament, in Holy Communion, in the Eucharist, that fragile form uh, that, that he's taken, but we know that it's the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ. And once again, it's Jesus giving himself to us and we're nourished, we're fed, as I said, we, but we need that real tangible sign to tell us that we are fed and nourished. So every time we come to Mass and we receive communion. It keeps us going. It's the, it's the nourishment that we need, and it's God himself dwelling in us, that intimate meeting that we have. And it just reminds us as well about how amazing Mass should be to us. Any Mass that we go to, it doesn't matter how bad the music is, or whether there's any music anyway, because we've had to undergo that. I know a lot of people are missing music in church and singing, but you know it doesn't matter how bad or absent that is. It doesn't matter how bad the preaching is or how good the preaching is. Because when we're coming to Mass, it's the most amazing thing that we're coming to witness. 
we just make ourselves aware of what it is that we're witnessing because every time we come to mass we're going to the last supper how amazing is that to be at that that was a very intimate description wasn't it just in the gospel there of the last supper you know we're there with the disciples with jesus it's it's present again it's not just another it's not just a reenactment we're there at the last supper every time we come to mass but not only just the last supper we're there at the foot of the cross you know we've got the, the cross is behind me here we're there at the last supper but we're there at the foot of the cross as well witnessing the outpouring of love that amazing act of love that god has performed for us and then the third thing it doesn't just stop there we're there every time we come to mass we're witnessing the resurrection of jesus we're coming to see the empty tomb but not only the empty tomb jesus really truly present brought through the hands and the words and the actions of the priest but jesus working through that priest that's the guarantee that jesus is risen and he is there that's how we witness the resurrection most profoundly in our lives when we come to mass so imagine you know we, we get distracted we get bored we take it for granted and we we like certain things in the mass the music as i said the preaching whatever if the readings are done well and so on and so forth and the surroundings but when it comes down to it the most important things to remember is every time we come to mass we were, we're there at the last supper we're there at the foot of the cross and we're there for the resurrection how amazing is that what a privilege it is to come into church and to be present for those things it's a gift it's a gift that we give thanks for it's a gift of love it shows us once again how much god really loves each and every one of us together now we profess our faith i believe in one god father almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible i believe, I believe in one lord jesus christ the only, the only begotten son of god born of the father before all ages god from god, from god light, light from light true god, god from true god begotten not made consubstantial with the father through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by, by the holy spirit was incarnate, was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake who was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end i believe in the holy spirit the lord the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son who with the father and the son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets i believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church i confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and i look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come amen we pray together now our prayer of the faithful we pray together we pray for the church throughout the world that it may inspire all people to live together in peace to share and to stand up for what is right Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for world leaders that they may all do all that they can so they all people have, have, have enough food to eat and can live for, from Poverty, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish family and friends that God may inspire us to share what we have with others so all may have enough to eat. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hail Mary, 
full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of our womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Remember in particular, lately dead, John Porter, John Hobson, Anne McCart, Ray Corley, Christy Tierney, Kevin Whiteman, Kathleen Ricketts, Sylvia Sivori, Renato Lenata, Yusef Gill, Jim Kennedy, Delia McHugh, John Skillen, Olive Burns, Peter Hampson, Michael Moriarty, Seamus Hennigan, Maureen O'Neill, Barbara McDonough, Richard, Betty Bergen, Marion Rutter, Helen Meller, Betty Mulrennan, Thomas Donnery, Keith Plinston, Brendan Flanagan, Mary Mead, Aristoteles, Oliveros, Peter O'Neill, Margaret Mary Geary. Anniversaries, Kath Schilling, Bernard Lackey, Thomas Smith, Luke Dumbill. Birthday Remembrance, John Moynihan, Sick. Beryl Townsend, John Bell, Kathleen Swindley, Patricia Phelps, Con McGuinness, Francis Pierce, Teresa Redmond, Terence Flanagan, Lawrence Lindley, Rose Deacon, Tony and Catherine Hampson, Malcolm Berry, Pat Coffey, Peter McAndrew, Kath Kelly, Irene Kerr, Anne Rowley, Mary Stadden, Caroline, Stephen, Sharon Todd, Joe Kelly, Hannah Mannion, Mary McMahon, Greta Bottomley, Dina Millward, Janet Morton, and all affected by COVID-19. Special intentions for Alan Shaw, Angela McGowan, and all those affected by mental illness. And we make all our prayers together through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirits. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, and and profess profess your resurrection until until you come come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Catherine of Siena, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, God Almighty Almighty Father, in the the unity of the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever forever and and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name, name. thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. Thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the safe sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world, have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may be delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. I'll just mention uh, from the newsletter, um, the, these film masses will finally be ending on the 4th of July. So that will be the final broadcast. Um, so I just want to say thank you very much to all those who've helped make it such a success, especially Matthew, of course, for his many hours of editing. I think it's been almost unique, really, the way that we've done it as a parish. But it's required a lot of work behind the scenes. So the, the time has come to bring it to an end as we return to some kind of normality. So thank you to all those who have contributed. God bless you all. I'll just mention for the, the St. Cath's Half Marathon, we've now closed the fund for that, but you can, of course, still make donations direct to Cornerstone or via the parish. And the bishops asked that each parish should have an environmental lead person. So if anybody's interested in being that for our parish, uh, please get in touch with me or Father Michael. Thank you all for sharing in this celebration with me. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.